welcome to Comic Shop Team Up. I'm your host, Anthony Desiato, teaming up with the owner of Fat Moose Comics in Whippany, New Jersey, Sean Hendricks. Welcome, sir. Hey. hey. We you are know, highlighting a new sh- a new area of the shop. <laughs> it's still so weird when you say the owner of Fat Moose Comics. I still have that kind of, it's only been a year and change, and it, it still feels a bit surreal that, that, that I have to deal with this now. <laughs> but no, it, uh, yeah. It's so strange. It's it's really weird, man. You'll know. You'll figure it out when you buy your comic shop and, and you have, you know, yeah. alternate realities version, you know, 2.0 or whatever. It's very strange. Very strange to be in charge of everything and, like, you know, the master of your own destiny. It's I, – I like it, and it's also completely frightening. <laughs> no, I, I, I can imagine. I don't think – I will ever be at the helm of alternate realities reborn. I, I you never know, Why not, man, you never Who, know who's more qualified than you. I honestly, I mean, the thing that I've always said is that I, I think there's a set of circumstances that if they came together, I would think about it. And I think that still remains true, but I don't know more and more. I think, and this is like, this is some Steve Odo pessimism seeping in. I'll, I'll readily admit that. But I think <laughs> that, you know, in my mind, there's this hope that, you know, if, if you build it, they will come, right? Like that if the store came back, like all the old crew, the customers, like people would people would return, right? And I don't know. I just, I think that's probably a little naive. I think I would be, I think I would be disappointed if I, if I went in with that expectation. And honestly, that in and of itself, just that's not enough of a motivation to you know, open a store or reopen a store. Um, but that being said, I, you know, there would be that hope. And I think I would be disappointed on that front, but uh, again, you never know. I, 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 I doubt it. I doubt it, but no, no. See, here's the thing though. And it's maybe a sign of the times with the pandemic and all that. I'm getting so many new people in the store. You know, I mean, I'll always have my regulars and you know, my long timers, but, um, so many times, like I can tell when somebody has been in the store for the first time. They're looking around. They're kind of, you know, and and, I'll, and it's tough with the masks. It's hard to make out faces sometimes and things. But I'll say, oh, is it your first time here? And I'm like, yeah. And every week I get like a dozen new people who've never been here before. But again, you know, what you can do these days is kind of limited. So you're like, oh, let's go check that out. And, and you know, so if you were to open a store, if you were to open a store, um, You'd probably, yeah, maybe you wouldn't get all your old school people back. You know, Jeff is probably, you know, overseas assassinating people for the CIA. (laughs) That was his name, right? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Jeff, our our most legendary customer, who's actually working at a Chinese Chinese restaurant. Yeah, Yeah, we got confirmation on that from one of the one of the AR crew members who saw him. Yeah, yeah, we we do we do have eyes. We we got eyes on him at least uh, temporarily. So. (laughs) Because that was a big, that that was a big question mark. Yeah. He's the most (laughs) legendary by far, by far. But yeah. yeah. So if you wouldn't, you know, get those guys back, you would certainly get a whole new crew of people. Like we spoke in the, the previous uh, episode a week ago about Nick and Octavia. Um, They're new. They, they didn't shop here until I took over, you know, they, they don't know Matt or any of the previous owners. and, And I've, there's many customers who are new to this, to my regime here at the store, you know? So if you were ever, you know, dumb enough to open a comic shop, you probably, you know, you, I'm sure you'd get, you know, some of your old school guys like Brian O'Day or whatever, or Dr. Bill would fly up from New Mexico and, you know. <laughs> yeah. But here's the problem. And as you know, right, friend, we've been talking about this on the longer Halloween on, on my comic shop history. I've been reconnecting with the AR gang. Like, and now, of course, the people on that show, those are, that's really like the, the inner circle there. I, I mean, I'm speaking more about the larger people, but within that inner circle, like, there's maybe one or two who are still buying and reading comics. So like, yeah, it'd be great if Brian O'Day came by. I don't think he would buy anything, but it would be fun. We'd have a great time. We would chat for sure. Do you know what my dream scenario is? All right, I'll share this. This is my dream scenario that I think I would I would do it if it were under these circumstances. So, you know, Metropolis Collectibles, right? Vincent Zerzolo, he was in the documentary with the oh, action yeah. one, right? Oh, so yeah. In the, 
And the, yeah, I'm sure you saw the recent headlines where they set a new world record. They sold another copy of Action One for like three million dollars, three point two million like or something. Three point two, like yeah, yeah. You know, and so in the documentary, he, in my comic shop country, he's holding up an Action One that they had just sold for like two million something. So now we've surpassed even that. Like, let's say he was like. I would like to have a Westchester foothold, you know, and I know, you know, the area and, you know, there's, there's open real estate there. If it was like Metropolis collectibles presents alternate realities or like something like that. <laughs> and there was someone, someone behind it. And there was like, there was money and, and some kind of, you know, system already set up and, and I was kind of taking the lead with it. Something like that. Again, I don't think that's something that would really happen but that's sort of one of those scenarios where it's like okay like that actually would make sense to me there there are very right. few other scenarios i think the other one would be like bill mayo and and or some of the other doc like dr bill dr mayo. bill mayo you know some of the <laughs> others within this like if if there was sort of a you know a, a coordination of efforts and a few of us kind of came together to do it that would be about it i i don't definitely don't think it's something i would take on by myself um yeah, that, that would be a tough, would be a tough proposition. So. It's not easy. I mean, the, the one thing I have going in my favor, or a couple things, is one, we're in a weird spot, so the rent's pretty cheap. Two, my girlfriend Nicole makes a real living as an adult, so she can kind of cover me, you know, when things aren't working out. Um, but yeah, I don't understand, like, I don't know, you know, guys like, like Elon Strasser, who the original fat moose, uh, Pat Milligan, who owned and ran Pegasus enterprises for years, how to do this and also pay the bills, like the mortgage and car payments or whatever, and, and have children and pay for them and put them through college. Like it boggles my mind because I'm like. I'm doing okay financially, but I also have very low overhead and I have Nicole to, you know, basically cover my ass when things go upside down. I don't know how people do this. <laughs> like there are times I'm like, how the hell, how, how is this possible that people actually make a living at this? Like I do it out of love. I, I do it because I didn't want this store to go away. You know, I love the medium. I love the the, the customers. I, I just love the industry. But I don't understand how real people can do this. You know, people who are like, oh, I've got three kids and a mortgage and two car payments. Like, how, how are you pulling this off? But, but it's like a lot of them don't. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, yes, there are examples, uh -huh. you know, but that who do, you know, I mean, obviously it's a mix as with anything. But I think there are a lot who, you know, this this is sort of like a little side thing or there's family money or there's again, a spouse who, who can support them or, you know, whatever the case may be something they're doing in retirement. I mean, so I, I, I mean, you know, I, I think the question is a, is a valid one. And I think there are a lot who don't, I mean, I think the, you know, I would venture to say that, you know, the comic shops that are that successful where the owners, you know, are truly supporting themselves solely through the shop and supporting a family and like paying employees. I, I think that's definitely the minority, like probably by far, you know, I mean, we don't have well, statistics on that, but I'll drop a few names. Um, Chris Wilcock, he, he runs undiscovered realms, right. Mm -hmm. But he also has a, a tattoo place. Yep. And I think if I remember correctly, that's kind of most of the way he makes his money is through the tattoo, but maybe not in the past year, you know, with the pandemic and stuff. But, um, uh, Dave O'Hare, who you've interviewed, has a, is it a exterminator business or something? So he runs the Garden mm. State Comic Fest, but he also, like the bulk of his income is from, or is it a hardware store? What the hell does he do? I thought I'm it was sorry, an exterminator <laughs> thing, but I think I'm basing I that on, so, I think right? you told okay. me that. So I don't know if you, if you were I wrong. Think he then told I told us that. I, oh, all right. It feels like forever ago. But um, Menachem. Am I saying that right? I've heard yeah. it pronounced differently. Okay. Right. His wife is a teacher or he was a teacher. But yeah, it comes down to the only way to really do this, unless you really knock it out of the park, is to have a support system, to have a partner, to have a backup plan. To have, you know, like if it wasn't for Nicole, I'd, no, I'd be sleeping in my car. <laughs> like it's just, 
And again, I've only been doing this for a little over a year. And I've got plans. I've got next year, April 1st of 2022, will be the 40th anniversary of Fat Moose Comics. And I'm going big. I, I've already got things in place that I don't want to announce yet, but it's going to be. And it lands on a Friday. So we're going to have a big old thing. And I'm calling in every favor I've ever been owed and every professional I know and every musician and Sean Wolf from Cooking with Stupid is going to come here and cook for everybody. We're It's going to be a thing. And you're going to be here whether you like it or not. I but would I be honored. I know your address. I will come. I will I will kidnap you and bring you here. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be good. Actually, I don't know if you have my new address. I'll have to talk off. I mic. think I do. Actually, oh. yeah, we'll talk about that because okay. I have a birthday. I have a, a belated birthday present I want to send you. Oh, that's very nice. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, well, you know. I'm excited. I mean, I, I, yeah, and I know you want to keep it under wraps. It's a year away. You're still working on it. I get it. But I can, honestly, I mean, I, I can, I can picture it. And I, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And I mean, yeah, again, b- between you being a musician and knowing all these musicians and, uh, I mean, I, if I had to guess, I would say maybe a comic book artist who's a close personal friend of yours maybe would be there. <laughs> There's probably a chance well, of that. I am actually <laughs> negotiating with uh, Aftershock Comics. One of their representatives is a friend of mine, Mitch. He comes in every couple of weeks or so. And we're talking about doing a store exclusive cover for the anniversary. And I would be reaching out to my close personal friend, Tom Rainey, about maybe doing the store exclusive cover. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm spinning a lot of plates as always. Oh, that would be but, uh, that would be so cool. That would really yeah. that would be great. No, I'm excited, and I you know again maybe not, yeah. I can talk Tom Rainey if he's into doing it into you know putting a squirrel into the picture somewhere just as a hidden little tribute. You know, I you know it, look everything's possible. But while I appreciate that, and if there's room for it, great. But this is this is the moose the the moose's moment. I so if the yeah, squirrel's the not there, squirrel, it's a, squirrels right. are small. We can get a that's squirrel true. in there. <laughs> that's true. But but that's cool. And I mean, again, this is my own. This is not anything you've shared. I'm just speculating. But you know, you have that the lawn in front of the storefront, and then the parking lot in back. That's really kind of closed off. Not closed off, but I mean, it's it's out of the way. Right. If if there were to be some sort of outdoor component. There's, there seems to be space for it, if there were. Oh, yeah. I, I, I want to go full on live music, barbecue. Like, it's, you know, yeah. how long is someone going to live? You know, like, let's take advantage of this. I was basically handed this opportunity to take over this store. The store's got a huge, long history. Why not? Let's, let's go all in on it. So, again, it's about a year away. So, you know but I'm going to put every ounce of myself into this thing and make it the biggest, coolest, weirdest thing it could possibly be. Uh, one of yeah. my regular customers is um, in the uh, Mandalorian. What are they called? Oh, damn. He's in a local group that, that they're all Mandalorians. They dress up in their Mandalorian merch outfit. I'm going to get, them here i've got friends i don't mean to wait i don't mean to laugh but when you you (laughs) said like they're all mandalorian like like they're actually mandalorians (laughs) yes they're men yes they are mandalorians they live by the code and everything all right yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) yes this is the way (laughs) but no he's in the mercs the the local that they do all the cons and stuff um i know some cosplayers i know like i really want to make it i mean how how many comic shops have been around for 40 years, you know? Yeah. No, so, that's, that'll be cool, actually, man. Elon, who lives out near Seattle, he was talking about like flying back specifically for that. You know, he's the original fat moose. If not for him, I might have a career, <laughs> but no, it's going to be, I, I want you there, man. We're going to get every, we're pulling in everybody. We're going to get Dr. Bill Mayo there. We're, we're bringing in everybody. We're, we're, it's going to be, it's going to be epic. Yeah. You sent Dr. Bill a, a gift recently. He was, he was very pleased. That was very nice of you. You sent him a, oh. a Greedo figure, right? Yeah. He made some posts on Facebook about all he ever wanted was to fill a Darth Vader figure case with Greedos or something. So 
<laughs> so <laughs> I sent I sent him this is this is ridiculous. I sent him a Greedo, a vintage Greedo. It turns out it was Nicole's Greedo. I didn't know we we co-mingled our Star Wars collection together when we moved in, you know. So we have this Star Wars shrine of all our figures and things. And you know, I had some vintage figures. She had some vintage. I didn't know whose was whose, but I saw his post. I was like, oh, let's, I'll send this to him. Blaster included, original blaster, you know. And um, when he posted, oh man, Sean sent me this Greedo. That's so great. Thank you. I showed it to Nicole. All like, look, I did a nice thing. She goes, that was that was mine. My dad gave me that when I was a kid. And I went, oh no. Uh, I was like, um, I can't really ask for it back <laughs> it's like, i'm so sorry sweetheart i didn't know that i said i don't know which which stuff is yours and my like you know we've been living together for years i was like i i, I just assumed maybe it was my credo um so yeah. if he watches this you'll probably then get it back in the mail no feel no so bad. no she's cool with it i i I'll, i told her i'll make up for it i'll find her a greedo in the wild and it, it's, you know, it was from her dad, but it's, he's still alive. It's not like, oh, this was an heirloom. It's so I'll, I'll, I'll make it right. I just, feel, I felt so shitty. Though. I'm like, Look at this nice thing I did for Dr. Bill. And she goes, that wasn't yours to give away. I'm like, ah, shit. <laughs> you might have to get her another cameo to make up for that. There you go. Call back. Somebody get James Marsters. <laughs> yeah, Marsters. You know, Marsters, <laughs> Marsters was a guest at, the inaugural, the yeah, the first Undiscovered Realm Comic-Con. You know, we mentioned Chris Wilcock before. That's the convention he yeah. puts on, the comic convention he puts on, because he also does a tattoo one. Um, and the first year How he, does he, he did find it. the time? That guy, he's relentless. He's, he's very tenacious, and yeah. uh, he hustles. I mean, this guy hustles yeah. hard. And you, you, you and I have talked about him. Like, we've, we, we, you know, we all talk about that. And he and I have had these conversations, and, uh, you know, it's... I'm in awe of that guy. Like, I don't I don't know how the hell he does it, man. And yeah. I, I salute him. Yeah, no, he does a lot. He's got a lot of plates spinning, multiple businesses, multiple conventions, multiple conventions he attends. I mean, it's, 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 it's inspiring to me, for sure. Uh, but the first undiscovered con, uh, James Marsters was the, like the big name guest. And, um, I didn't meet him, but I was like standing right next to the table where he was signing. So I, I saw him up close and, uh, and I watched him observe, uh, you know, I watched him interacting with people. And, and I mean, again, obviously, you know, you, you would expect someone to be nice, you know, doing something like that, but still it seemed genuine. Like he just seemed like a nice guy. Um, and, and that came through too in the cameo that, uh, I don't know why I'm pumping up James Marster so much, but <laughs> I mean, he seems like a really nice guy. <laughs> hey, James, you need to be a guest on this podcast. I mean, obviously we need to get James Marsters. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so we've mentioned Bill Mayo a few times, you know, he's a, a legendary figure within Do- alternate reality. Doctor. doctor. Yes. Dr. Doctor Bill. Bill Mayo, <laughs> uh, a legendary figure. I knew him before he was a doctor, so it's all right. Uh, but a legendary <laughs> figure within alternate realities lore. He worked at the store for, for many years. He's in the documentary. I mean, he loves the store. I love the store, but like he loves the store. I mean, it, you know, it's like a whole, well, it's a we, whole other we level. We spoke about it during our commentary podcast for the documentary where yep. nobody seemed sadder, you know, at the demise of, of AR than, than Dr. Bill Mayo. Like he was like, just seemed distraught <laughs> about the whole thing. And I get it, you know, I get it, but it really resonated as like, wow, this guy, you know, like this meant so much to him. Yeah, it was. And, you know, and obviously I know we've talked about this, but it's, yeah, everyone else, the, the AR legacy interviews there, you know, everyone was like, oh, like, you know, as long we still, you know, we still have friendships and that's the most important thing. And, you know, they're not wrong, but you know, Bill hit on something that I wanted in the movie and I, I cause it resonates with me and it's like, I know you get it. It's, it is the importance of that, that space, you know, having that place to go. But anyway, we've talked about that a lot. It would be fascinating to me. One of the things I wanted to mention to you, because I've, I've gone on the record now so many times, my own podcast, other interviews I've done where, you know, people have asked me about all these stores I visited and I always keep coming back to them. Like fat moose feels has the closest feel to alternate realities than any of the others. And they're, they're all great in their own way, but the, the atmosphere, the vibe is closest, you know, and maybe the 40th anniversary party is an opportunity for that. Like it'd be fascinating to get like a crossover going because don't you feel like there are, there are like there are counterparts at the stores. I mean, 
Rich Roney at Alternate Realities, the beloved elder statesman. You you have your own Rich Roney, I, I think. I, I consider Gene at, yeah, at your shop Gene, to be like yeah. the equivalent. Um, mm-hmm. Elon and Steve Odo, two of them, the founders, the you know the original owners, the, the B- bitter founder. <laughs> you know, you and me. Yeah. Uh, no, I I know. see. You know, just watching your first documentary. Which was what my comic shop history? No, what was the first one? The, <laughs> the AR first one, one was my comic shop documentary. With, documentary, with okay. The a, you and know, with the AR com- capitalized. Right, and then the my comic shop country. I feel like I know your people just from watching them, you know. And then now having interacted with them, and um, just to hear like when you would when you podcast with brian o'day and and you guys talked about me i'm like oh my god they know me like and i like i just feel like you and i have have got this little venn diagram now and i would love i would love for all of them including jeff if he's not too busy assassinating people for the cia to, to come here and let's all get together because a lot of my people now feel familiar with your people from having watched those movies and i just really feel like there's this cool like crossover and and yeah we yeah. should definitely i'm telling you if, if we're all still alive by april of next year i'm gonna have a huge blowout here at the store and it's gonna be nuts and i love for everybody you know dr bill can take a flight from new mexico you know, and, and we can just get Steve here and everybody. It, it'd just be cool. Like, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm an optimist. No, <laughs> I'm mean, not busy I, being a pessimist. No, I mean, it would be cool. It's like, you know, when uh, I guess you don't get as much of these these days, except like the Arrowverse and the Dick Wolf verse and all that stuff. But like when TV shows would have crossovers with each other, you know, otherwise unrelated shows that would cross over. Um yeah, it would be fun. I mean, obviously, like, the wheels are turning, and I'm already thinking, it's like, well, we could do a podcast miniseries, and it's like, we could do one with the Elder Statesman, we could do one with the owners. We could do one with, like, I don't know if, I don't know if I'll, I'll go that far, but yeah, man, uh, it would be fun. It would be really fun. Yeah, I don't know, yeah, it's like reality, I don't know, reality would implode, though. It's like, you can't have, you can't have, like, no, we can, no, both we're, stores we're, in the same space. It was like matter and antimatter, and just... yeah. <laughs> But I think that would be cool because, um, again, you know, a lot of my my customers have an affinity for your former customers because they've seen the movies and they, they, they it's just they've listened to the podcast and it very much yeah like our stores are very similar yeah you know and, and somebody was talking to me today about that and they said yeah your 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 rapport with anthony is great and you can see in the in the documentaries that the stores kind of have that same vibe and and nothing against any of the other stores in your movie they're all probably much more successful than i am but it's just a different i don't know this is more of a clubhouse sort of personality driven kind of thing you know and uh we're going to do this, man. We're going to make this happen. We're going to network. I'm going to get Mike Zapsick for that yes. anniversary. We're going to get my buddy. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, we talked about how you met Zap or he, Zapsick came to the store in one of the earlier installments of team up. I posted the photo on my, in, on the, my comic shop country Instagram, which is what I've been using to promote this show. And, uh, one of the most liked photos, I mean, we're talking like 50 something. It wasn't, that wasn't anything crazy, but for me, that was, <laughs> it was a lot. Um, but uh oh man i had something and then i and then i lost it well wait ah uh, oh well this i don't think this was exactly it but uh i did want to mention you know we're talking we keep talking about the, the my first documentaries and someone uh someone just commented on it on youtube and said this was unexpectedly great which overall is a compliment but i just i read it as like i went into this thinking this would be crap but it actually was pretty right good. it's like a backhanded compliment <laughs> Oh, this didn't suck as much as I anticipated it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember what I wanted to say. And okay, we'll be diplomatic because this is not this is not a knock on any of the other comic shops or retailers. I don't want to generalize, and this is not a knock. But I think, like, I think for some, <laughs> for, no, like, I think I love for that you're taking a moment to really get it together. <laughs> no, because I want to. Cho- no, because I, you know, I, I want to choose my words. Uh, carefully and correctly here i think for a lot of retailers yeah i think for a lot of retailers you know they're comfortable within the bounds 
of the store and the retail space and their role behind the counter. And when they're there and they're making recommendations, like they come alive, but they might not necessarily be that way outside the shop, right? Like within that space that they've created, something in them comes out. Whereas for you, I just think you're, you're generally speaking, very personable, very affable, very sociable. You, you get along with people. You you easily strike up conversations with people. I think, you know, being in the store that's amplified because, you know, you're again, like putting on a show to, you know, to, you know, to an extent, like you're entertaining, you're hosting, but I don't think it's, it's like exhausting. I know. <laughs> I'm so tired. I know. So tired. But it's like, but I don't feel like, and you tell me if you feel otherwise, but I don't feel like you're, it's like, oh, flipping a switch. I just think it's amplified a little bit, but I think you're very sociable generally. And so I think that that might be one of the things that leads to a little different environment. Now, that being said, it's like, would Odo fall into that same category? I mean, his approach was just so, it was just a, <laughs> just a different approach. Yet, nevertheless, it did ultimately contribute to this, a similar vibe. So I don't, I don't know. But in your case, I think that, I think that might account for a big piece of it. Well, I've always been a bit of a performer, you know, way before I was a musician. I was always the little kid when my parents had guests over, I'd come out and do some shtick or I'd memorize like comedy routines from things. And, you know, for show and tell, nothing I liked more than show and tell in grade school. I'd be like, look at this thing and look at that. And, you know, I've always been kind of an attention whore. But, um, doing this it's it's genuine it's because i love comic books it, it's you yeah. know this has been a thing for me forever so you know yeah sometimes you got to slap on the happy face and you're like you kind of right but the thing is my customers know i'm not bullshitting them if i'm having a bad day i'm in a bad mood i had a fight with nicole or i got a problem with a distributor i'll tell them flat out you know they'll, they'll be like oh how's it going i'm like oh, everything sucks right now and i'll tell them why but you know I don't burden them with that, but I will never, you know, lie to anybody and be like, everything's great. And, you know, the store is on fire. I'm like, everything's right. cool. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like, you know, like I, I'm just, I'm, I don't have the energy to lie. You know, I've known people that just get off on lying and they, they build these narratives and these fake, like, well, I'm not going to say Jeff from, AR, but you know, <laughs> think about that the life that he portrayed. Like, I'm in a you know, special ops and I got machine guns on my car, whatever. God bless him. I don't have the energy for that. Like, I will not lie to anybody because once you make a lie, now you have to follow through on that and you have to you have to nurture that lie and it's like i and if you're lying to this person about that and you're lying to another person about a different thing now you got to keep track of who you're lying to and what the lie is Ugh, life's too short to, to put up with that like I, I i'm i'm genuine and and i'm not saying that like oh here's to me i'm so genuine it's just i'm too tired and lazy to lie <laughs> or put up like some persona or false right. lie. no like and sometimes it bites me in the ass because you know i'm very much this is who i am and somebody comes in like how you doing i'm like i'm doing terrible you know it's like but it's the truth i just it's the way i do it now that's probably one of the ways where you and steve are actually quite similar because steve too would not sugarcoat anything <laughs> uh though i like I, it's funny that you're like you know i don't lie not like jeff i mean the standard shouldn't be jeff Je you know it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know and again like for anyone not familiar you know jeff was the most legendary customer at alternate realities and he would come in seemingly with a story ready to tell it would rarely take much prompting but you know what we were able to verify was that, you know, he lived locally. He worked at TGI Fridays and had a couple, like he actually worked at the deli next to alternate realities for a period of time. He worked at a bagel place, uh, one town over. There were things we were able to verify, but then, you know, he would claim to be part of this like SWAT team going on undercover, undercover missions and all this stuff. And, uh, again, very tall tales, but the thing that, and you know, <laughs> I know I've talked about this before, but it remains so fascinating to me that, like, presumably, I, I you know, we, we're all working under the assumption that these were not true. And you would think if he were making up a story, like it would be the most like positive, 
store like he where he comes off great but i mean like numerous stories and it's in the documentary like where he claims that someone on his team like got sniped and they lost you know so it's like there was loss and betrayal like there was all this stuff and i don't know if that was just to make it more interesting for himself or for us but it's like you would think he would give himself all wins but he didn't it was um yeah very interesting but again i don't think jeff should be the standard but the last thing i want to say before we jump for this episode is you know you described yourself as an attention whore but i think like to an extent you kind of have to be with whether it's you know podcasting or independent filmmaking or a store i mean so many things these days especially but like for a comic shop it's like you gotta get you know and i know you do your own youtube videos and stuff like that it's like you gotta but right like you they're gotta very, get yourself out they're there very ridiculous <laughs> no but they're fun and it, like it, it your personality comes across and you know it's it's another way to try to reach people so i you know i think it's you know you you do what you gotta do so yeah, I, I, you know, as far as attention horror, you know, it's more just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It, it And I so much enjoy being left alone. You know, as much as it comes across sometimes like, oh, look at me, look at me. There, I, sometimes I just wish everybody would go the hell away. <laughs> I could just like have some alone time. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's just not the way my world works anymore. But, yeah. um, you know, I always tell Nicole, like, my ideal vacation is get a hotel room for a week alone and just bring a stack of books and a couple bottles of bourbon and just, just not engage with anyone ever and just, just have a week where it's just I can. But that's just not what my life is. And that's fine. I get it. I'm, I'm here for everybody else, you know. Well, but of course you have to take time for yourself where and when possible. But uh, on the note of wanting to be left alone, um, everybody, <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Until then, don't call on a Wednesday. Don't call.